Well, welcome. It's still Friday the 3rd of December and there's some new news from South Africa. In fact, basically, this is the first paper to be published on Omicron. So I want to look at it now and give us the up to date information. And it's basically telling us that people that have had the infection can catch Omicron, that the natural immunity is not uh, protecting them fully, at least from reinfection. It's not telling us about immune escape from vaccine. It's not telling us how sick it makes people. It's just telling us what it's telling us. And this is the way information is probably going to be coming, actually. It's going to sort of come through in dribs and drabs. But this is a very important dribble or drab. I'll let you decide, decide which. So here we have, how likely is someone who's already had, already had COVID to catch Omicron variant is the question. This is what one of the things we've been wondering out loud about now for some time. So catching it twice or more. So if you've had the natural infection, then Omicron comes along. Can you catch Omicron as well? The answer is yes, you certainly can. Now this is from the uh, National Institutes for Communicable Diseases in South Africa. So this is pretty good. This is pretty good data. Now it's not a peer-reviewed uh, paper, but it, it is a paper, and of course you've got the links for it in the description. Increased risk of SARS-CoV-2 infection associated with the uh, Omicron variant in South Africa. So what's known about this topic already? Well, prior infection um, to SARS-CoV-2 gives. A fair degree of further protection. In other words, this is nothing to do with the vaccine. This is just, if you've had the if you've had the virus, then you've got about an 84% uh, reduced chance of catching it if you're exposed to it again. Nothing to do with the vaccine. This is in unvaccinated people. So that's kind of where we are. Fairly good levels of natural immunity. Uh, so 84% so reduced risk of infection. What this study adds is, now this is interesting, they find no evidence of increased risk of infection associated with circulation of beta or del delta variants. Now this is quite an important point. What, what they found here is that in the previous waves in South Africa, in, in, the, in the previous waves, people were not, in the previous waves, people were protected. They were not more likely to become reinfected, so they were protected. Uh, in fact, this is a bit surprising because when you do the in vitro studies, when you actually look at the way the antibodies interact with things, you would expect that people with the beta and the delta would become reinfected at a greater rate than they actually did in the real world situation. But of course, what matters is the empiricism in the real world. Forget the, ben the benches and the laboratories. This is what the real world data shows. And it actually shows that they weren't more likely to become reinfected, but with the Omicron variant, they definitely are more likely to be reinfected. So um, surprising there, we, we find no evidence of increased risk of reinfection risk associated with circulating beta or delta, as you would expect, but they didn't find it. So that, that's, this is what science is, it's what happens in the real world. Compared to the ancestral strain in uh, routine epidemiological data from South Africa, and as we'll see, this is pretty large scale data. In contrast, we find clear population evidence to suggest that substantial immune evasion by the Omicron variant occurs. Now, we don't have a lot of uh, in vitro uh, laboratory data so far on, on um, the, the likelihood of reinfection with Omicron, but we now have some real world data. So the real world data, which of course is the data that everyone matters, that's the one that really matters, is actually come ahead of the, the laboratory data. So that's, that, that, that's uh, very good for the authorities in South Africa. They're well on the ball. In contrast, we find clear population level evidence to suggest substantial immune evasion by the Omicron variant. People are getting reinfected. An Omicron selection advantage is at least partly driven by an increased ability to infect previous infected individuals. In other words, the reason that this variant has spread so quickly through South Africa is because it is reinfecting other people, reinfecting people that had already been infected. It's, it's increased its target of opportunity, if you like. People that had been infected can get reinfected, and that's part of the selection pressure. That's why Omicron is now the dominant variant in, in South Africa. So dominant variant, increased reinfection risk. Yes, yes, there is. We can say that now. Omicron variants of SARS-CoV-2 demonstrated substantial population level evidence for evasion of immunity from prior infection. The direct quote from the authors. Retrospective analysis of routine epidemiological surveillance data. And this is taking us from the 4th of March to the 27th of November. 
and we now know that the Omicron period uh, in South Africa probably began in early, early November. South Africa's uh, National Notifiable Medical Conditions Surveillance System. So, so now this is not this is this is whole population data. Uh, Two million seven hundred ninety-six thousand nine hundred eighty-two individuals with laboratory confirmed SARS coronavirus two infection. So we know that this is uh, this is this is now at large scale. So these number of people had reinfections. Um, laboratory confirmed SARS coronavirus two. Now the results: thirty-five thousand. Uh, 670 suspected reinfections were identified from this group. So this is the group that had, had infections. These are people that had definitely had the infection and at least 90 days ago. So, th so this is longer term immunity they're looking at. So well over two and a half million people had had the infection and what they found in this time period was that there was 35,670 people reinfected in this time period, 4th, 4th of March to the 27th of November. So a lot of reinfections among the 27, the, uh, uh, among the 2.7 million individuals with laboratory confirmed uh, SARS coronavirus 2, so 35,000 reinfections. And, and th th they tested positive more than 90 days ago, at least 90 days ago. 35,670 individuals with at least two infections, 332 individuals with a third infection and one poor individual who had a fourth infection. Although I think it was reasonable to assume there was some immune problem, at least in this, in this last person here. Now, this is, this is where we get down to the real numbers. The relative hazard ratio for wave two versus wave one. So in other words, if you'd had the infection in wave one, how likely were you to get the infection in wave two? Well, the answer is only 75% as likely. It is actually a reduced chance of getting the infection, which we'd expect from a degree of immunity, you would expect that. The relative hazard ratio for wave three versus wave one was 0.71%. And again, roughly what you'd expect, you'd expect a degree of ongoing immunity. So only 71% is likely to get infected as someone who hadn't been in infected before. So that's what you would expect. Now, relative hazard ratio for the period the 1st of November, 2021 to the 27th of November, so this is the Omicron period, relative hazard ratio there was 2.39. Now that is a big difference. So here we see that they're much less likely to get infected. Here we see that they're quite a bit less likely to get infected after wave two and wave three. But with this one, what we're calling wave four now, uh, more than twice as likely to become reinfected. So um, we see a re Let's just make sure we're clear about this. What this data is saying. So what we're what we're saying is, if you can see me, um, people in the first and the second wave, the beta and and the delta waves, were less likely to get reinfected. People in the omicron wave are more likely to get infected. So we are going to see, based on the South Africa data, a lot of reinfections. This is not people who've been vaccinated, remember, this is from natural infection. This is only telling us about natural infection, but it's not telling us what we want to hear at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, but let, 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 let's carry on. Uh, in the time of beta and delta, increased uh, in primary infections. So in, in, the, in the second and third wave, there was a lot more primary infections, but no corresponding increase in, in, in reinfection hazard. So the, the people were enjoying protection. But in the time of Omicron, decrease in the hazard, uh, de decrease in the hazard for primary protection. In other words, less people were getting the infection in the first place who haven't been infected before, although to be fair, the population in South Africa who haven't been exposed is relatively small, but increase in reinfection hazard. So this is actually saying, or potentially saying, that people who've had previous infection are more likely to get infected than people who haven't been infected at all. And this does somewhat raise the spectre of what we call antibody enhanced immunity. Now, too early to say that yet, this is still based on preliminary data, um, but it is, it is not the news we wanted to hear, to be quite honest. The conclusion that the authors draw, population level evidence suggests that the Omicron variant is associated with substantial ability to evade immunity from prior infection. Nothing to do with vaccination, just from prior natural infection. These poor people can get it again. In contrast, there is no population-wide epidemiological evidence of immune escape associated with the beta and delta variants. So, um, they were getting protected from the beta and delta variants, they're not getting protected 
from the Omicron variant and in fact they seem more likely to become infected. This finding has important implications for health planning, particularly in countries like South Africa with high rates of immunity from prior infection. And, and of course, in South Africa, the, vaccinate, the double the vaccination rate is only 24%. So most of the protection in South Africa now is from people who have had uh, natural infection. And it's looking, if anything, that they're more likely to get reinfected. So in the South African situation, I'm afraid we can say from this data, with the low vaccination rates, because we don't have data on that yet, but we can say that a lot of people in South Africa are going to get Omicron in the next uh, few weeks. The numbers in, in South Africa will increase absolutely dramatically because if anything, previous infection is making Omicron infection more likely. It's not what we want to hear. How that will affect the vaccinated population this, this doesn't tell us. This is, this is people with natural infection who have not been vaccinated. Um, there, is, there is some good news at the end, so j just hang on a minute. Uh, urgent questions remain whether Omicron is also able to evade vaccine-induced immunity. Don't, don't know. And potential implications on protection against severe disease and death. Again, don't know. Now, um, the, the reason that this could be, and a stress could be good news, is that if the Omicron is causing mild illness, and so far it does appear to be, there's some question mark on younger people in South Africa, yet we don't know that yet, that's still a concern. I'm, I'm, we're monitoring that literally on an hour by hour basis. Um, but it could mean that this highly infectious variant is going to spread around the world, but cause absolutely minimal disease, outcompeting the Delta variant, which we know can cause some quite nasty disease. And therefore, it could mean that the pandemic is essentially over because it changes into a COVID changes into a very mild condition. That is the hope. That is the hope. But we don't know that yet. But what we doubt, what we do now know, is that this is outcompeting the Delta variant in South Africa. Part of the reason is that it's probably because it's more infectious and has a higher affinity for the receptor sites. That's probably true. But for sure, it's outcompeting the other variants because it's more able to reinfect. This is a big evolutionary advantage. So people that have had natural infection. Um, are not protected from Omicron variant in South Africa and I'm afraid that's likely to be replicated around the world. This isn't actually particularly um, good news. Uh, what are the other people saying about this? Professor Paul Hunter. Um, the implications of this paper are that Omicron will be able to overcome natural immunity and, and, he, and he does there, he says probably vaccine induced immunity to a significant degree. Now that bit he doesn't know he is saying probably. So, so the implications of this paper that Omicron will be able to overcome natural immunity, yes, and probably vaccine-induced immunity to a significant degree, we don't know yet. So we don't know how this is going to react when it reaches highly populated or highly vaccinated countries. But the degree is still unclear, though it's doubtful that this will be uh, represent complete escape. So he's expecting some immune escape from vaccines. Uh, Professor Francis Ballow at the University College of London, the higher estimated reinfection ability of the Omicron variant to cause reinfection is not overly surprising, so he's not surprised, uh, and, and could be largely anticipated on the fact that a large number of uh, mutations in the spike protein are carried by the Omicron variant. Now, I don't actually agree with Professor Ballow here because he's extrapolating there from laboratory data into the real world situation. And as this data from South Africa has shown us, the real world situation is often behaving in a way that can't be predicted from the laboratory uh, situation. So I think, uh, I don't agree with that extrapolation there, um, but it, it is turning out to be true based on empirical uh, data, um, which increases the Omicron's uh, very ability to bypass host immunity. Yes, it does if that host immunity is caused by natural infection. Whether it does as a result of vaccine immunity is now looking probable to some degree. So there we are, this variant is out competing everything else and it is, it is infecting people who had previous natural infection. So that's two 
question marks we had about this have been answered in a, in a disappointing way. We don't know about the vaccine escape. We don't know how sick it's making people. We remain moderately pessimistic about the, the vaccine escape. It, there will be some immune escape to the vaccine. I remain optimistic this is likely to cause more mild disease because it's unlikely that it's, so that it's going to be very transmissible and it's got enough sort of genetic reserve to cause spare, uh, spare disease, uh, excessive disease, although, although some people uh, don't agree. So it's, I think it's unlikely to have enough genetic reserve left to cause excessive disease, severe disease, as well as causing very high levels of transmissibility, but th that, that remains to be seen. So I, I remain moderately optimistic but very disappointed now that people who've had COVID, I'm afraid, uh, can look forward to getting Omicron COVID as well uh, as a second or even for some people a third reinfection. We wait for data on vaccine immune escape. This doesn't tell us that, but this is this is disappointing. No two ways about it. And uh, that's uh, you're now as up to date as I am. Thank you for watching.